I'm about to um, present the talk that has been translated uh, by Jafar uh, Naqshbandi from his father, Sheikh Masum, the spiritual director of the Naqshbandiya Foundation, um, one of our guiding lights. And it's been translated um, from Persian uh, into English. So I would like to, uh, I, I have the honor of, of being the communicator of this uh, from Sheikh Masum and his son Jafar. All praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe, peace and blessings be upon our master, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the illuminating light, Allah's mercy to humankind and all God's creatures. Sheikh Masum presents his greetings and congratulations to all of you honorable brothers and sisters who are here at this event today in this blessed festival of the birth of the Supreme Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran al Karim declares, I created jinn and humans to worship Allah. And worshiping Allah is the only reason we're here. This is it. This mission demands nothing less than our top priority and concentration in our life. And this is a worship that Allah is commanding that should be done not because we're supposed to, but out of sincere devotion and humility at a level that Allah deserves. That worship can only be done with a calm nafs, nafs being the lower carnal soul that all human beings have. And this nafs needs to be obedient to the higher powers so that one can truly worship Allah. And these are, in the, in the Quran, it, uh, it says, Allah Ta'ala says, for sure a person will be saved if he has cleansed his nafs from shurk and disobedience. Surely the request of a person who covers his nafs with disobedience will not be accepted by Allah. So this Quranic verse truly emphasizes the importance of the purifying of the nafs. And in the Holy Quran, the word nafs has been repeated over 200 times. And obviously there are many divine warnings to human beings about the nafs. So w w one of these, let, let's speak a little bit more about the nafs. There are three levels of the nafs that have been mentioned in the Holy Quran. There's the nafs amara, you might say the rebellious soul, the rebellious nafs, the nafs lawama, which is the obedient nafs, and the nafs mutama'ana, which is the, excuse me, um, the calm nafs, or the tranquil nafs. And this unruly nafs has been mentioned in Surat Yusuf. And the Quran says, I am not praising myself to control my nafs that it does not wish to do forbidden acts because truly when the nafs is rebellious and unleashed it will move toward acts which are forbidden like being heedless of remembering Allah and committing other uh, forbidden acts. Submission to the nafs, to this nafs, to this rebellious nafs is rebelling against God. The second nafs, the, the accusing nafs, um, God um, says, he declares, in the name of the Day of Judgment and the accusing nafs, um, because the, this accusing nafs is the nafs that wakes up when it commits forbidden acts, and it regrets and blames itself, 
and sincerely ask for forgiveness. This is uh, the human conscious, uh, you know, being, uh, being aware that, uh, that we've done something that we shouldn't have done. And the, the, the tranquil nafs is also mentioned in the Quran. And Allah Ta'ala says, Oh, the nafs that you, that you have made calm and, and is in peace, believing in Allah and the day of judgment, come back to your Lord and be pleased with Allah's rewards as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is pleased with you. Become one of my blessed servants and go to the heaven that Allah has promised. There's a deep conviction of the truth in this verse, and it really lies at the root of anyone's spiritual life. Because a Muslim believes that if he or she will take up the, the entire and, and realize the entire and continual dependence that everyone that all of us have um, up, upon Allah, his whole heart will say, Amin. Many believers pray and ask very earnestly for the filling of the heart with the love of Allah. And they wonder why they don't make more progress. The reason is often this. The I in you. Now what does that mean? Before the heart can be filled, it has to be prepared. And one has to minimize the sense of I-ness. In other words, how can one, how can God fill one's heart if the nafs is filling the heart with I, 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 me, 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 mine, mine, mine. So this selfishness has to be conquered. And when this happens, the darkness in the heart is immediately gone because it's filled with the light of Allah. And of course, fighting the nafs is a difficult task. Indeed, the Prophet وسلم, has called this Jihad al Akbar. This is the highest striving that a human being can do in his or her life. And remember, at the same time, as difficult as this might seem, that Allah does not demand anything from any of us that we cannot ultimately do. And so, another Quranic verse from the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised all those who strive in the path of truth that he will light the way for them so they do not lose their way and become misguided. And the stronger a Muslim's faith is in Allah, the more that that person will have courage to do this great striving, this jihad akbar. And so it's important, my brothers and sisters, that we all pay attention that there are two types of guidance. And here, Sheikh Masoom is, is moving from the discussion of the nafs to a discussion of, of guidance for people who can help us achieve this. The first kind of guide, there are two kinds of guidance. One is giving directions. The other is on uh, actual arriving. And as he explains it, the giving of the directions is the duty of prophets and the ulama. And the example he gives is here, a person wants to example f go to a masjid in Chicago, and you give him directions to follow. But somehow 